push me and then just touch me till I can get my satisfaction. 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 Push me and then just touch me till I can get my satisfaction. 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 Everyone's favourite for celebrity, Peter Phelps. Oh, yes. Welcome to the limo. Thank you. I put the cell in celebrity, man. You do put the cell in celebrity. <laughs> after you, be my All guest. All right, look at this. Now, this is what I do after the theatre every night. You know that. The stretch. <laughs> It's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> well, hold on. There's another man there holding a line. Hello. This is a nice one. Whoa! Well, hang on. <laughs> He's new at this. He is. No, it's all a bit tricky. Look, Look at this. Seatbelt's on. Now, everyone's going to think this is how I go home every night. Is it? Yeah, I wish. In style? Well, you're dressed Absolutely. Up yeah, I've got my formal Birkenstocks. Oh, yes. Name dropping. Yeah, but I came to the, the theatre today because it was 36 degrees in board shorts. So I'd been down the beach. So okay. I just wanted a little bit of a so aftermarket. Where are we actually going? Driver? Um, Where are you going? Well, I'm going uh, home to tuck my baby into bed, yeah. and um, then uh, I'll probably watch Dave Letterman or something, and then <laughs> it's, your it's exciting, isn't it? Well, I'll, so, well, I'll try and get rid of that, um, that pile of undies they threw on stage tonight. Uh, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, they love me so much in Melbourne. Yeah. Well, uh, unfortunately, they are men's wife unboxes, but... Um, yeah, it's good. We've got, we've got a broad base of fans. Broadway. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna skip we're gonna go back to the beginning actually. Because you're born in what, 1960? Oh right, the very beginning, yeah, yes. Very I was beginning. born at a very young age. And you were pretty much you jumped into acting straight away, didn't you? Not not nineteen sixty. No, not nineteen sixty, uh, but with my family I had to do a lot of acting, but it uh, wasn't quite that early. Is that where it came from? Uh no, no, there's no acting, no performers, no mus musicians no. at all, no, no just criminals and but you didn't um, do any truck classes, drivers. you just dive straight straight into no, the world of I, I kinda did some classes when I'm when I was, uh, after I did some uh, three years of soap opera, which I consider my drama school, yeah. I, um, I, I did sort of one-off classes with uh, friends that were in NIDA and stuff, but it was kind of like... Are envious of you? Because you, you didn't do the, the full, you know, uh, way that they know. normally do it. I don't, I don't know, I don't, you just, <laughs> people think about what you, what you are as, well, what, what you are, I don't, it doesn't worry me, you know, um, they still think you know, I can't do stuff that I'm doing right now, so I don't care. So when did <laughs> if you, I thought if I worried about that, I wouldn't yeah. do it. So when did you, what point did you go, oh, I think I'm going to be an actor? Uh, no, it's probably, uh, probably that one year into it, in like 1979 when I, I would start in the last year of the restless years. Um, and I thought, you know, I'd been, I'd been uh, a lifeguard and uh, all sorts of things during school, and uh, dropped out of university. And I thought, I thought, I've got a pretty good instinct of uh, if something doesn't work, and this seemed to be working, this yeah. acting thing. So I just stuck Fun at it. Fun at the time, and yeah. yeah. At uni, I was doing um, BADP and primary teaching, which may may have parlayed into phys, phys ed or something. But anything with sport, sport and kids, you know, I was, I was going to do. <laughs> Was. So I became an actor. So what the, turn, the turning point? Big kid. Just, yeah, no, nah, not working. Because how many years is the schooling? Uh, th uh, three, three, and then a, a, a year of um, practical, which is teaching. But um, I just, I, I found out after 12 years of school, I wasn't really in love with institutions, school, yeah. you know, and I never have been. And uh, I, I would have lasted a week at drama school. I just, I don't like the structures uh, of. You know, like formalised oh, kind oh, of yeah. schooling and education. And not that I, my mother was a teacher, and uh, and my sister's uh, like a brainiac. So I don't know how I'd. I'm just a, a misfit. Well, it's good to be an actor to be a misfit. Really, don't you? You, well, what, you know, you have the skills there, just watching and observing. Yes, just sponge it up. You know, uh, osmosis um, and just uh, having a, a good radar, having a good inbuilt kind of. Um, uh, bullshit detector yeah. and like this yeah. is not working or that person is not working you know and yeah. and just just honing it and uh, like, you still hone it now I've been doing it 25 years and I'm still honing it which is good I'm learning as I go. You are I mean you've starred in so many shows you've been probably one of the most luckiest actors out there. That oh yeah it's luck I suppose but l luck is the first job and maybe the second or third but after the like the I don't know couple of hundred that's <laughs> you got to have something more than luck you know but um yeah I've, I've, it's lucky it's I have been lucky my satisfaction 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 what satisfies you 
good work, you know, working really good directors, finishing the end of the day and knowing you've done a really good job. And, you know, you are. You're doing great. Oh, thank you very much. See you at uh, the Academy sometime then? Yeah. Who knows? So, maybe. We will. We will. Uh, a good woman. Nothing, nothing for us. Particular body part? Um, I love Rex. Yes. A lot of those out here tonight. Yes, I know, and they're doing their very best. Uh, let me tell you. What satisfies me? Catching the perfect way. Catching the perfect way. Yes. Perfect beach? The perfect beach, all of us in, uh, in, in, in Bali. Yeah. You've played so many characters in, in so many different fields. What's your favourite? What do you like doing? Oh, just something that's not a part, not not that I'm known for, like this play I'm doing right now. Um, Twelve Angry Men. Twelve Angry Men. You I'm play a real geek. <laughs> I'm a skeeky. You're a bit of a nerd. Yeah, well, that's some, somehow that evolved. I think the first week in Brisbane, I was a bit yeah. like, I was more uh, butch than that, but uh, somehow I just <laughs> it can be counting this button down because kind of. Where did the accent come from? You were just shaving one day. There's a lot. There's a bit of Jerry Lewis. Ha ha ha! You know, I don't know where that fucking came from, but. Um, I don't know. Um, it just sort of worked, you know, because yeah. he, he's a broker and he's kind of like a, he's got a wife and no kids, but he's um, he's probably a closet fag. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's but, your character. That's all right. Um, but that's okay. It's 1957 New York, yeah. and um, yeah. he's. Uh, <laughs> this is there goes that demographic. <laughs> this is so different to what you do. Like this is stage acting as compared to television. Mm. What do you enjoy out of the stage? That television doesn't offer. Uh, it's a real buzz, you know, um, and, it's just, and you're in control. Um, in a film or TV, it's more of a director's medium, so they they put a, put together the jigsaw that you create within an A scene or bits yeah. of A scene, and it's all kind of disjointed until uh, the editor and the director get together and cut it together. Um, well, yeah, hopefully it'll make you look bad in a lot of jobs, but um, it's just the immediacy of theatre, you know, it's um, and especially this one's a bit, been a bit of a hit. And people are loving it, and, uh, and it's got good reviews, so it's everything you want. So, so it's, a, it's a good buzz, minutes, you know, what? they're getting the side. How many minutes? Uh, no, at the moment, 98. <laughs> so 98 minutes, non-stop, no break. It's no like a day. scene, like we do probably in, in, a, in a, say, Sting is the TV show. Um, it's probably the, the longest scene would be three minutes, you yeah. know, and, and then you can sort of screw up and do it again if you don't, if you don't get it right, or there's a technical error or something. But this is a 98 minute scene. You know, and uh, there's no exits or entrances. Once we walk on, we're on for 98 minutes. And uh, you miss a beat, you miss a beat. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. miss one. I miss one. I missed miss a couple, one. but no, and no one in the audience. I told you that in no confidence, you are. <laughs> um, now you're going to miss one. I've been watching it, and I saw a few people. Miss no, it. but Mark has covered my ass this tonight. We just come off stage, actually. But, so that's the skill um, of really acting is, is the cover-up factor. You've oh, it wasn't a cover-up. It's actually it actually enhanced it because yeah. he's interrogating me, and I go, well, well, and what I really did was forgot my fucking line. And he goes, well, Monday night. I went, Monday night. I was at the movies. Thank you, the market. <laughs> so it was, it was well covered. But that's what we're doing. We, we know this thing so well. We're so confident with um, the piece that, that we're just like flustered and go. Oh, oh no, you sort of get the the, the inner little little guy goes. No, get me off the stage! I bet you kind of the part of the acting is to look really cool and like. Was it to, you know, like uh, that was meant to happen, man. It's a tough play because you can yeah. stuff up a few lines. That's it. You could yeah, play it's, the whole it, play. It's very specific. Um, the writing is really so well structured, and uh, you know you can you can't. I mean, you can say ands and buts and different things, but you know yeah. you, you kind of got to stick to the yeah. the, the How game did you plan. Get casted for that? Uh, you'd have to ask the director, <laughs> Guy Masterson, but you know, I've got friends who are casting that agents. particular role that you were in? Yeah, well, I, I, I first went to see them about two other roles um, that Richard Piper and Shane Bourne play, uh, who were the real kind of overt, racist, bigotry, kind yeah. of um, angry, angry men. And I ended up being the least, probably least angry guy in, in the thing. But yeah. it was just what guy saw, or, or you know, he played actually played my part, the director in, in the Edinburgh uh, production. Well, I, heard, that, I heard a rumor that your mum went and saw it, and she didn't recognise you. No, for she didn't know. Five minutes. Like, she didn't know much about the play. She knew what the basic tenets of it were, but yeah. she's sitting next to my um, wife person and. Uh, Said, uh, when's Peter come on? And she goes, oh, well, he's, they, they, once they're on, they stay on. And he's got, he's the one in the glasses with the pinstripe suit. So. Well, we got a section we call uh, a quick fix. Push, 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 push. My favourite character played. My favourite character. Um, oh, favourite characters. 
I loved, um, I loved playing um, Abbo Henry in Blue Murder. Yep. Uh, just because it was really out there and <clears throat> totally what I'm not. And, uh, I like the guy in Lantana that I played was kind of like uh, a bit kind of, you know, a little bit of bitterness there. Um, I'm loving, I'm loving the last six years of Stings as Peter Church. You know, I, I just, I just wear him like an old coat. You know, yeah. it feels really comfortable. TV acting or stage acting? Um, uh, keep, continue the question. That's it. Left one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> both. Like, I mean, I've been in turkeys on with both, and I've uh, been on good ones on both. So I just, yeah. it does. I have no yeah. preference. You know. Things you like doing in your spare time? Um, well, uh, these Did days I'm, I'm I'm bringing up a one-year-old with my wife, person. I call wife, person, because we're not married. So we're all like living in sin and shit, you know. But um, yeah, no, I'm just I'm just in a sense of wonderment, like she is with the world, about um, everything's new and teaching her. Most embarrassing open. moment. Um, oh, there's a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> Best one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, I probably this was. Uh, well, I once appeared very out of it um, on a Doug Marley show some years ago. Um, it was my birthday. It was my team's grand final. They lost, um, and then the slabs were coming thick and fast up the top of the grandstand. Yep. And that night, I thought I'll be right. I'll be right until I got onto, into the TV studio and yep. just went completely spastic. Uh, and uh, it's a great lesson. I'll never. I'll never have a couple yeah, of drinks yeah. before I go into a TV studio but, mm, promoting a, <laughs> uh, a show that I was on. But anyway, it won't happen on this one or ever again. Drink up. What <laughs> satisfies you? Um, doing a good job in my profession and um, yeah, uh, being a good father. Um, Do you have a motto? What's your saying? Oh. Uh, I don't really have mottos. Have no, no. Your yeah, worst habit? I, I have. Uh, I probably. I probably. Uh, just being a, a, a social smoker. I think when yeah. when I've got asthma, it's not good. Oh no, that's not good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sydney or Melbourne? Uh, both. I mean, yeah. I like. I mean, born in Sydney. Now I'm from, from Sydney. Yeah, I've been yeah. here six years. Uh, I like. I'm, I've never been part of that argument of like, um, you know, right, one or the other. Yeah. I, I, Sydney's great for a lot of reasons, especially the, the water and the ocean, which I love, and and Melbourne's great for like just um, getting in limos and doing stupid yeah. interviews. Yeah, that's the last. That's the last question. <laughs> that's the most stupid thing you ever did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ride a limo. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. we're, we're cutting from here, yeah, up there, up, up, up. because he's nude, he's, he's, nude he's from there below. It's nice and hot. Get yeah. an idea. We'll be back after the break for more satisfaction. You are one glass drinker. No. Is he alright? No, he does it all the time. He does it? Really? Yeah. I mean, I know he acts dead, but... I need your help. <laughs> Hang on. Maybe you sure? Glasses of white wine. Maybe. Do you want a glass? Would you like to take the bottle? Oh, jeez. Jeez. Oh, maybe we should. He just... loves pulling this trick. Oh, take him to parties. Oh God. We need water. We're back in the the Lincoln King limo here for satisfaction. We're talking to Peter Phelps. Just Hello. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I don't get out of bed for under that, no. Yeah. It's the agent. Uh-huh. No, no. No, Val Kilmer's a cunt. Sorry? Okay. Yeah, will you tell him that from me? Thank you. Carry on. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about that, because you went to the States. You went to the States for a while, yeah, That's cut you? out. No, no, I'm leaving that in. You bloody. I'm leaving that in. <clears throat> tell me about America. What made you decide to go to America? It's a very big place, uh, north of uh, you don't like it, do Mexico, you? south of Canada. Oh yeah, I love a lot of it. Um, I don't like a lot of it too. Um, I liked it when I was working there and uh, I watched Babe. Uh, I did a lot of other jobs there too. Yeah. Um, and that first season of Baywatch that I did in '89 wasn't the kind of the show that it turned out to be. And I enjoyed playing this um, kind did of. Did you know what it was? Larry and Ozzy. 
Um, oh, I, I had, I, I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't like uh, King Lear, yeah. uh, but it wasn't like the tits and arse thing. It ended up when I did it. I just played a, a role, and it was like it was a good larrikin kind of guy. And I'd been a lifeguard yeah. um, in my working life, so it was kind of like pretty easy. And I was living on Venice Beach and some mountain biking to work, you know. And nice. Yeah, with a, yeah well, it was great. Well, how long was that run for? Um, I went, I was in it for a year. Yeah, yeah. In '89, and then that was it when it was on the network NBC, and then. It got axed and then it got picked up independently with David Hasselhoff as a producer. So. You don't like him? So I, don't, I don't dislike him. I actually saw him oh, about 18 months ago. He was yeah. here doing a, This Is Your Life with Mark Holden. Oh, okay. And we, we went out that night and he remembered everything and we had sort of a good night. Obviously, didn't read my, you, he obviously didn't read my book because yeah, <laughs> there was a chapter that wasn't that yeah, complimentary, but I didn't bag him, but I just yeah, told yeah. him how I saw it. And that's it. You're, you, this, that was your first book. Yeah. Yeah, and you're in the current process of writing another one. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a very long one, and I. So you're I, a man of many talents. I am not Bruce Courtney or uh, Thomas Keneally. I can't write right. quickly. Um, one book every ten years. So how long did it take? <laughs> ten years to write the first book. Oh no no no. First oh. book, first book was um, uh, only about six months. To, six months. Yeah, and that had a lot of breaks. But so that was about. I kind of write stream of consciousness, and I have to, uh, uh, and I have to feel. Angry, I'm very angry. Yeah. Uh, uh, I haven't been ang that angry yet. I am oh, on stage okay. at the moment. But yeah, <laughs> I, but you're angry. But I think the best motivation for me to write is to be angry. And when I'm when I'm in acting work, I don't write it because I write a lot about um, the process of of uh, is this feeling the thing? artistic sort of side yeah. of things, you know. And I I don't want to go home and write about what I've just done all day. Yeah. So you know, well, I have to be out of work and I have to be angry. So maybe they'll be soon. First book was about your experience. Uh, pretty much about pretty much about living in L LA for uh, four years. So it was a big training ground, really, wasn't it? For what? For yourself, for your learning self. Training ground? No, no. Well, everything's a training ground. You just learn from everything. Um, you know, I, I I could go back to LA tomorrow, but I'd be in a different way. You know, yeah. I, I I was I went over uh, on the back of uh, some. Uh, publicity I did for a fi film here and a yep. filming I did in New Zealand and uh, they come to you and say hey join my agency and uh, we've got this one set up yeah, and all yeah. that and then you know after a year of uh, just doing you know not the greatest standard of stuff or whatever then I thought well I'll stick it out for another few years which was three years I was there for four years and uh, it was great fodder for a run. book but yeah that's what I'm saying if you the uh, LA somewhere like LA and there's probably no other place like LA but it's um it's not a great place if you you know walking the streets and trying to get a job you know it's yeah. uh it can be really soul destroying and were you but, looking to be the next mel gibson no nah, never no i've never had a great like uh you know there's nothing that'd be great to yeah. to be working in the in the way that they do and getting a lot of money and creating yeah. their own work and yeah. work comes to you um but i've never had i've never yeah, had a great fine, huge yeah. no no i never had great sort of massive plans to be or do anything it's just like it's probably a downfall, you know, but I, I'm not that highly ambitious. I just want to do the right job and, and you know, hopefully generate my own work yep. soon and, and be able to write and direct and have all those things, you know, like the t-shirts say, but um, <laughs> it's, I, don't, uh, I don't stress about it too much. What satisfies me? Fresh air. Being in Melbourne is great. It's such a nice change from Sydney. What satisfies you? Um, nice people. Just being nice. Right. People who are mean, just nah. No, they're not. We don't like mean people. That's it. We don't like. We don't want them. No, just, just kick them in the shit. <laughs> That's it. What satisfies me? Oh, a nice pair of flat shoes. Flat shoes. Yes. And yourself? I mean, Heels and another one. Puppy. Yeah, uh, actually, a good pair of Uggs. Uggs. They're in. You're gonna bring them back. That's a dangerous move. Oh no. Always been in, darling. Always been in. What about you? You're an ugg boy. What satisfies you? No, not an ugg boy at all. Oh, what satisfies uh, satisfies me is going like that. Oh, that feels good. That feels good, doesn't that? Oh, that's an easy man to play. Get like this. I don't yeah, you just walk in. And the puppy goes. Go on, walk in. Talk a bit about love. Love talking mm. about love. Yes. You met your missus. I want to talk about oh, love in the back of a limo with you, pal. <laughs> when you first met her, she wasn't interested. Didn't want a bar yet. No, no, she no. does now. She wants every single bar. So what was that? You just sort of like you were filming on a set? No. Location in a restaurant. Um, 
Yeah, there was a particular Monday in uh, 19. Oh no, shit, yeah, not that far away. No, I don't remember the date. It was uh, we, were, we were actually Donna's uh, Donna owned a restaurant um, in Melbourne um, called Stessy. It was in Kensington, and we were shooting there one day, and uh, I wasn't doing a lot of work that day. I was doing surveillance with Anita Hegg was doing a lot of um, the, the main stuff because there was an internet stalker yep. and I was doing things like the newspaper going like, you know, ah. and at the end of the day she said, uh, you know, you don't do much, do you? And I go, oh, oh she was cocky. I'm the lead actor. <laughs> Wait do you see the set tomorrow? I say everything, you know, one of those. And I, then I asked her out and she was married and said no and I rang her up that night and said, look, sorry, I didn't, I don't do that usually. Uh, you know, call up. So it started off a bit, of a, a, bit, a bit of a run. Yeah, yeah. Well, but three months later, we were in Smith Street and I had a gun drawn, the camera crew were right up the, the uh, alleyway and um, she didn't know that we were shooting something. No, she goes, oh, hi, Peter, how you doing? And I said, hi, like, Jenny or something. And uh, how you going? And uh, she goes, what are you doing? I'm, I'm pulling, out, pulling out this gun saying, like, I'm working. And um, how, how you doing? And yeah, just like, just get this done over. I come up and I smack this guy in the head or something and he, he got knocked out or something because I was trying to impress her. And, um, we went out to, had our first date that night, um, <laughs> and then, um, That's interesting. she That's didn't eat really meat, she didn't, she oh. doesn't eat, she didn't eat meat, she's a vego, and I said, do you want to uh, go out to Thai, don't like Thai, do you want to have seafood, don't eat seafood, do you want to have a steak, don't eat meat, don't eat, mm. and I said, well this is going to be a one night stand, isn't it, um, because I've got to have a meat eater, yeah. and, um, can't go out of it, but anyway, she did, and, um, and now she eats seafood. It still doesn't so you're make weeding her into the yeah. Meat. yeah. It took her four years to get seafood. Seafood. Maybe another four years before so she been together goes to meat. How long in total now? How long's it been? Uh, we've been uh, together about five years. Because you're smitten, do Oh well, she's my best friend, you know. Yeah. It's five years, it's good. There's something about you wanting to go to Norway or something. Um, so well, 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 Stingers is the number one rating show in Norway. Yeah. Okay. And they've asked us to come over to sort of promote it. No, we're kind of like. Uh, Traditionally in Norway on a Friday night at 7.30 there's a police or a thriller or a detective type show and um, that's, that's a family sort of thing so on Friday night so uh, I don't think so I think they um, I think they have it in English Subtitle. because every Norwegian speaks English it's yeah. compulsory at Fair school um, well right. most of them anyway yeah. but and uh, so I think they have the subtitles Norwegian in subtitles and English as it is <laughs> they came over, some journalists came over and wore the national dress and, and held up the local chocolate bars and things and it's kind of funny that you know them on the other side of the planet yeah. and walk down Oslo and being famous, it's quite a weird. Because <laughs> you're fame here, what, you can walk down the street in Melbourne and not really be harassed too much. You don't get harassed, you get recognised every, yeah. every day. But it's uh, Aussies have a certain sort of like, g'day mate, like yeah. the show, uh, like, hey, he's that guy from Water Rats, yeah, fucking water rats. sting is he? Water rats, because I heard that, yeah. I heard that a few times. <laughs> that guy from Water Rats. Yeah, look, let's see. Toilet if I Steve Bisley or Colin Friels? Come on, ooh, which one? <laughs> Too many characters, that's what it is. You've played so many uh, roles. No, well, I was actually a guest in Water Rats before Stingers um, happened, so. Yeah, you made it a strong impact. Few. So how's it feel, like, because you won, you not only won an AFI, you won a Logan. Yeah. The best male talent. Yeah. Like most popular actor. <laughs> best actor, darling. Yeah, best actor. So was I. I was I was away that year. <laughs> I don't do commercials, that's talent. How'd that feel? Oh, it was a great buzz, you know. Yeah. It's good, like, you, I, I have no crimes, but I, I don't dis discount that at all, it's yeah. good. One was one was done. You know, the AFI is judged by the industry, and the, the, the silver logo is better, judged by yeah, people who watch the show. There's no yeah, one or better. Right. I mean, it's like it's great. They both look together on the shelf. Yeah, you I was know. Say, where do they sit on that? <laughs> Which one's the doorstep? Oh, uh, pretty bo boring. Uh, either in my filing cabinet in my study. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Well, what's an award you'd love to win? Um. Now that you got the tape. <laughs> Oh, Father of the Year. Father of the Year. Oh, we can do that. Yeah. So what's your belief for marriage, though? Well, I've always said that um, if I don't become a Mormon um, or uh, um, some sort of other religion that can that's into bigamy, hey, that was that was bigamy. Um, then I'll maybe a little girl will walk down the aisle and present the ring. I don't know. Please. Who knows? We need a scoop. No, a semi scoop. Semi-scoop. You know, it's the, I don't know, I've seen, so many, so many, so, so, I've seen so many sort of... Because you've not been married before. I know, the, the way the country's going, it's a very, um, it's a very radical thing, isn't it? It is. To be living in sin, and I'll get a knock on my door from family first and say, you know... You're not going to win you know, Father Year until... Antichrist! <laughs> get out of Albert Park. You can't win that war. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Jory, I'll just settle. Where do you want to go? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, what do you want to do? Oh, rich and happy with a waterfront property in Sydney, three kids running around uh, so that I, they can give me my milkshakes and smoothies in my old age and uh, have an easy retirement with a yacht that I can sail around the I world. Don't be, I can't see you retiring. No, you don't retire as an actor, you just, no. fall, just fall over. Fall from grace. Just fall over. <laughs> you fall over. Until the end. You're going to do yeah. a Carl Summers, you know? Oh, no, he's, he's picked himself up again. No, no, what's Dusted that? himself off. Have you seen the car? Uh, Sons Ostrich. Return on. <laughs> well, I know. Up. Dancing with the, the has-beens. Because Stingers is what? How many years <clears throat> now? It's been five? It's uh, six years. Six years. Yeah, six That's years. That's a long run. That's a, yeah, it's, it's a bit of, I think it's a bit of a record, I think, you know, Blue Healers has done its 12th, didn't do its 12th year, but yeah. um, we're like Channel 9's longest running cop show or, or show, I think. Um, one of those things that has just been a slow taker to start with. And yeah, which is good, I like that, because it's like, it wasn't, a, it was never given any special favours in the hype uh, area or, yeah. or, you know, it had its publicity, but it didn't have anything major, you know, but it's had a really core audience out there that are still loving it, you know, oh, and right. it's, um, Great riding, I must say. It is. You must love like every. every it's day a terrific team of riders, you know, and, and uh, we work together uh, really kind of in a good way. Um, you know, they, they know that you've got little bits to uh, to tweak and here yeah. and there, but I totally respect the riders' um, work and the, the way that they've kept the stories alive every week and uh, you know it's down. Your job even more. Yeah, yeah. Despite what they say in the Green Guide, I do love our uh, riders. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank and, you. Uh, enjoy the ride in the backseat of the limo. Yeah, excellent.